Trafalgar fishing another common venue round with uh, Marlin, Dean Pretorius and Josh's club. They're going to fish a bit further down on the beach. Um, I'm going to plonk in here. We don't want to pile up the areas as well, the spots. So you spread out obviously and not uh, steal each other's fish because we're still fishing for the same club. Um, the area I'm here, yes, you can scratch a bit. But uh, I'm, uh, I think I'm going to aim for a Blu-ray and a cob. That's going to be my main uh, objective. And uh, I think Tyron, my son, here as well, he wants to catch some bronze bream and stuff, and obviously a cob as well. But everyone wants to catch a cob. But yeah, it's later in the year now. Unfortunately, this is only my third round I'm fishing. I only joined this year, the club. And it's still fun. I'm not going for, for uh, any teams or anything in the competitive circuit right now. I'm just fishing for the fun and slacker. Um, the guys get together, they bry afterwards. It's really a nice, nice type of environment. I like it here on the south coast as well, um, which is a nice area to fish. And I also fish with Inquasi, Richards Bay, with Dean uh, Reddy and them. That's just a bit of a three hour drive every time, so I don't always get to fish all the comps there. But uh, when I'm not busy here, I won't miss a common venue, especially. That's quite nice. It puts guys in an isolated area, a predetermined area which is today from Port Edward to South Group Point and you can place your team members all over the area when you catch a fish. Team member has to witness while you measure it and sign it immediately there before you put a bait in the water again. So in short that's pretty much the method and how it works and uh, yeah let's get uh, kitted up and fishing. We're starting at uh, half past three so now it's just uh, getting your rods rigged up, put your traces on and if you want to pre-tie some baits, if you think you know what's going to bite and work, you can pre-tie some baits. If you're fishing dangles, you have a couple of dangles, you just pre-tie them on the dangles. It's my Saltus, trusty old Saltus 5000. This, this reel has worked already as you can see. Shame, poor thing on the rocks and stuff. Um, and this is my Saltus 1263 light spinning rod. So it's a 12.6 foot light spinning saltist. Then you also get the power slim rod, which is the thin one, the new one. I brought this today, and then I've got my 15 foot grinder lead with my 8,000. And that's for the longer shots. I'm gonna fish one of my previous combi trays. This is just a little foil tuna circle in the bottom. And then a bronze green trace in the top. Okay, just tying the trace on or using a double figure of eight. You're using on this a point, this is a point six leader line I've tied and my trace is also way down to a point five. This is a point four nine siglon for a carbon. This is a point six, if I remember correctly, and I put a little fluoro kingfisher float on here. This is uh, the mustard tuna circle, a little four. This is uh, the wide gap carp X. X. Now, and yeah, I'm just going to fish a little blob bait and a prawn bait up top. Four ounce on this rod. Rod can handle it. It's 40 pound J braid on my Saltus 8000. This trace, it's pure circles, both of them. The reason I do that is uh, your chance of hooking up is a lot less. When you're scratching, and you're fishing two hooks, you just now you hook a nice fish and your second hook gets you in trouble. So fishing circle hooks prevent that. So the top one, I still fish almost a bronze green but it's 0.55 fluorocarbon, it's a bit thicker. So it can handle other fish as well. And it's a circle hook, both circles. My bottom hook, 6 0, tuna circle. Bigger hook, there's Blu rays and cob in the area, so that's what that one's for. And then I've got my sinker line, also 0.55. And in that, you can make a knot for in case this drops you, you get stuck. But you saw what I did, all three. This is a very difficult trace to keep in your bag because it tangles 
but not if you do all three separately. You tie them up separately, and then the mustard sinker clips, and you also get it in a Kingfisher sinker clip, and uh, the quarter little uh, anti-tangle sleeves I use. And you'll see I've used it on my hook snoot for the big hook, smaller one for the smaller hook, and then on my sinker I just do this because when you pull it through bricks that knot hits the rocks a lot. So it, it weakens it and then when you look again your sinker is off. So this helps and prevents your sinker or that knot to get damaged. I made a couple quick uh, dangles, use a little glass bead, this is a glow in the dark bead, a mustard ring, put a bit of foam on, pull the string through, it's a thick braid, and then make a knot and the hook just hooks there. Now I made this shorter because I want to make little uh, blue skate baits as well, which makes that nice. So I'll show you guys now what I do there. And to start off with, with a circle hook, I want to fish a cone. This is not that big. Okay, and that's it. Full rig. Then for the small circle hook, you can either fish a blob bait on it, which works perfectly, or you can put your bait on the back shank of the hook. And it also works. Just don't tie it tight and stiff, because then your hookups reduce. Or you can make little dangles, which I did for prawn baits. It's just a little dangle. Same thing, a bead in the bottom to stop the two pieces of uh, sponge. This is not foam, it's sponge. And still the braided, still hook the hook just through there and I tie my bait on this. Oh, let's start defrosting some of the lovely Afghan Marine bait I've got. Now some of it's already defrosted. I'm going to take one chocker out, one mackerel. And guys, something we haven't really shown you too much of is the head-on prawns we use for the bronze bream from Adkin Marine. It's these boxes, you buy them to eat. So that's pretty much the Canberra. And that's what we use all the time for the bronze bream. Look at how nice that is. Eh? Get a couple of them defrosted. There we go. And then one more thing, Adkin. Using a liquid brine to freeze these sardines, IKF. It's Natal sods and they freeze within 20 minutes which is much faster than the blast freezing which should mean this is the freshest frozen sardine you can buy. The Snookies Pulchard IQF. Okay, like I said I'm going to start with the short ones. I want to save my stomach section. you can mold and build any bait which is nice so I'm gonna add first a piece of mackerel get that tied onto the foam from there you know your bait won't slip and now you can start shaping it with sardine mix I want to do a mix for the blu-rays with the potential of a maybe a copy picking it up you're gonna use your hand to uh, to mold these into a nice little ball bait. I don't want it too big. I want it to fit any size mouth that comes around. You're fishing a competition, you want the points on the board. Now here's something I like doing for Blu-ray, and I'm sure some a lot of guys do it. Now when it comes to Blu-rays, you don't chuck your insides away. All of this. Oh, that's nice. All of this. You can use small pieces. This, not so much, but that definitely. But this also adds just to the bait nice and soft. Add a piece of that. Tie that on. A nice little combo bait. Okay, and then I'll wrap it up nicely so it looks neat again. We also want to lure the odd cobby swimming past. And to mush it up, you beat it on the hard, the tough side, the skin side. Have time to kill before the comp. When the comp starts and you've got a fish, the fish are here. 
you're not going to spend this much time explaining to the camera and doing all of this <laughs> you're going to put on a bait and get it in the water as quick as possible you might even reduce some of the bait i'm using here. and remember i mentioned the sardine belly now that's the piece we want to get onto that side still frozen solid so it's not going to tie nicely in this case but we'll mold it now this is a proper mixed grill a lot of times you'll get uh, get blu-ray only on the sardine only on the chocker only on the mackerel doesn't have to be this combination bait but uh, i like starting with this that's it fun dean's advice is red prawns a lot of oil in them and dimitri when i asked him for head-on said we would just use these head-ons and <laughs> make a combination so here we go dimitri if this gets a fish it's you now i'm making two baits here guys that's why i've got two sets of prawns I will do proper bait demos for you guys on separate clips. The idea is to make a little sausage. Beautiful! Now that's a big bait for anything really that uh, would be interested in prawn. And that I'm not going to tie too tight. I want it fairly soft still. And that's it. That's it. I left a bit of prawn, which you can just kind of hide your hook a bit and that's it guys that's a nice starting point for a scratch here we go well we got the uh, sixth common venue down here on the on the south lower south coast of kzn we're fishing trafalgar area uh last round we got a couple of blu-rays here so we're hoping to maybe get a blu-ray and we're going to dual target a bronze beam as well um, what i've got here is uh is a little multi-purpose trace it's a double hook trace i've got a little bit of prawn and crab on the top with a little float uh, with a little uh, number two mustard chinu and then at the bottom I've got a little 7-0 mustard um, circle look offset circle with a little five outs and then the tackle today I'm going with is my uh, my trusty saltiga it's a lovely lovely reel this is a 5,000 beautiful scratching reel and I've got 30 pound braid on there with a hundred pound leader so uh, we're starting in about two minutes let's hope we can get a couple of fish Here at Trafalgar on the lower south coast. Yeah, I'm targeting a bronze beam and I'm fishing with my trusty Catalina 5000H. And on here I've got some Cobra 50 pound braid. There's one that definitely won't weigh and it's a bit of a poison fish it's a grey grunter which are predominantly north coast fish so it's quite sad that we're getting them down here now because they can be a real pest when you're fishing for a fish that weighs beautiful but uh, not the target species definitely not a weigher so let's get him back Conditions are very tough, eh? we've got a south easterly that just started blowing. The water's warmed up a heck of a lot since this morning, so I think the fish are a bit shy. 
Hopefully when it gets dark we'll get a couple of fish. It looks a bit cobby, there might be a cob or two around, so hopefully uh, we get some fish in the dark. Really, what a beautiful little fish. Great sign that these are around. Stock status is not great, but you can see they're recovering. We're catching a lot of small ones in the reefs now. So that is absolutely fantastic. Let's get him measured, and then we can put him back. Okay. There we go. Let's get this guy back so he can grow up. Very territorial fish. You'll probably find he'll go straight back to his hole and in a couple of years you'll catch him he would have grown up again. Uh, Josh tagged one just down the beach here of uh, it was a, uh, Natal Junior record and about six months later I caught in exactly the same spot and it had grown another well, no, about one kilo. So yeah they're awesome eh? Good species. One bronze bream. It's exactly what we wanted. It's exactly, exactly what we wanted. So I was targeting with a prawn on the top. Get this guy weighed and back quickly. 37. Okay, get him back. Beautiful fish. Let's put him back. I'm going to put him back far away from where I caught the fish because otherwise. Uh, the rule is that they uh, scare the shoal away. I don't know how true it is, but it does happen, so we'll put him right in front of where Craig's fishing. Alright guys, so it's getting a little bit dark, so we're going to start targeting and switch up from the targets in the tree and start targets in the pop, your, your rock card, maybe even not blue skate. So what I've got here is a mustard tuna 6 -0 circle and on there I've got a little thing with angle that I've put some cool little foam on. So I'm going to do first is I'm going to take my chocker, cut it all the way down to open it up. I'm going to take my gut out and I'm going to keep that because that's really really good, it adds to the smell give more flavour to your bait Okay Cut down, take out this cartridge that's here And over this one that's here I'm just going to take my finger and my hook Line it up on the edge here, measure it You can see that like that Cut it at an angle so I have it thicker at the base going down to a point at the end there. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna cut it out the side, even take my chock hammer, beat the bottom a little bit. Okay, I line my knife along there. So I'm gonna start making some tassels. Try to get them as thin as you can. That way you got more tassels with more movement in the water. Take it, I line it up with my dingo. Put the tassels over the hook. Make sure that the hook's still proud. Button. Chocker. Add a little square here. So it's just going to cover the back of the back of my base that I've got. Chocker ball, the tassels. 
instead of instead of the tassel being on the bottom where where you throw going through the air the tassel would lift up now instead when you throw your sinker your sinker and your bait are going to go together and these tassels are going to go and they're going to line up along with the line so that's going to create a lot less resistance in the air enabling you to throw further like a small fish messing around with my bait for a while. Let's see what it is now. Wow. Well, that's definitely not the target species. Eels, they got some some really really ugly teeth on them. They also like to to twist up and turn. So when you catch that fish, you must be really careful of how he how quickly he can turn and how quickly he can latch onto your hand. So I always I never never like to grab him by the head. I usually just take my pliers and uh, put it put it through the top top uh, top lip, and then I can try try to work my circle out of its mouth. Right, guys, uh, we're gonna go and move to a spot where we can maybe get a cob. Uh, maybe a little bit cob here, but I think we'll go to a spot where we've caught cob before. Um, I hope it's going to be right there, so let's just pick up quickly and we're going to run there. Well, we moved about 700 meters uh, south towards a place called uh, Sunken Lake. Uh, a lot of rock in the water here and quite a couple of cod, so we have both thrown chocker and red eye baits. A bit of foam and a little bass rattle inside, so let's hope that the cob comes along. fishtail barbel. I was using a uh, mustard tuna 70 here with my saltist 65 30 pound J braid and my trusty saltist a light foot 14 foot 6. I was using a uh, red eye and chocker bait. Now the reason why I was pulling that fish so hard is because we're fishing in over a ledge. So a ledge with some really foul reef so what you want to do is you want to keep that fish even even a fish like that you want to keep it on the top the whole time. You really want to really want to uh, lower your chances of getting cut off if you give that fish too much slack or, or too much line here it'll definitely give you some trouble in the bricks oh it's a caper. also known as a lantern fish beautiful beautiful big eyes nocturnal they love caves in the day and then come out at night from there they adapted big eyes. Let's just get the exact measurement here. Okay, it's exactly 40. It's just going over 40. 40 centimeters. Perfect, let me go release this. Nice, very beautiful fish. Not a big fish, but I'm in the rocks. I'm all over the rock. Let's grab him. No, no, it's here. No, you don't have to worry. Might be a cob, eh? No, it might be a cob. Felt some nuts. What is the lesser? Ah. 
Yeah. Had us going there. Thought you had a little cob on you. But we found a Janessa. Check that. Believe that thing bloody found. Hey, I thought I had a nice little cob on there. Mm. Feels like a better fish. I bought another follow Glessa. When you follow these little fish, you pull them, pull them sideways through the water so they really feel a lot bigger than they are. This one's definitely not going to work, so I'm going to put it back. There we go. Nice fishtail barbel. Not really the target species, but we'll take it in when we're fishing compo. Because it's a good point. Just got to be really careful of his spines. Those one, and those, that one, that one, and that one. They are very poisonous and can really, really hurt you if they spine you. If they do spine you, hot, hot, hot water. So let's measure this guy and get him back. Hard yard session uh, with a with a six common venue, but we got a couple of fish. Uh, I got a yellow belly, a bronze bream. Uh, a fishtail barbel and a small lesser and Josh got a very nice uh, fishtail barbel so we're on the board we'll have to go to the bra and see exactly how our teams perform so yeah we'll see you next time cheers